my dear friends welcome back to high point again where you will get enough materials for you ugc net jrf english language and literature if you are a net aspirant or a literature student then you are in the right place like you can see the topic of today's video session is what pony it's a play a comedy by Uh, whom ben johnson ben johnson belongs to the jacobian age i have included a great session of audio lecture uh, which are simply explained uh, you know sufficient enough for you to understand in my website known as www.hypon.in and also there you will get uh, about authors of english literature of various ages and also world literature indian literature post colonial literature european literature american literature or any other topic that you need to study so we have divided the syllabus of english language and literature nta ugc syllabus of english language and literature into 10 major sub topics you can go and check my website and uh, you can have the free trial and see the topics and the sub topics and the modules and chapters and the authors how we are arranged it chronologically and if you are studying on your own this will also help you to what you you know you to understand what you need to study after all to get your ugc net jrf english language and literature so if you are determined to have it in 2022 then don't delay uh, and start studying with us because a 15 percentage of off in the course fee is going on in my website you can go and check see and uh, if you are interested you can join so once you join the course you will get free a uh, weekly test as a bonus in every saturday morning and also you will get a personalized study guidelines uh, for you to be consistent in your studies and also uh, don't get confused how you should you how you should learn start learning and also how you should continue with your learning and cover the entire thing so along with the 900 audio lectures that we are providing there we are also provided 300 plus downloadable materials a uh, pdf materials for about the major things that are there about the major uh, text and uh, contents that we have provided in the audio lectures and also we have provided the the whole previous question papers as well as practice question papers Uh, there for you to live attempt uh, there and know your marks and progress instantly so that is about my website and also if you want to join a whatsapp group to have a daily quiz where i am sharing every day question related to english language and literature and its answer and also news and updates related to nta ugc net jrf english language and literature uh, and uh, along with that uh, some study cards too you can obviously go to the description box and click the link and join or if not you can directly whatsapp me or call me in this given number there uh, i can share you the link or i can include you in the web in the group that i mentioned now and also if you want to know more about the course and fee structure and uh, the things that we are providing there uh, you don't you want to know in detail then you can of course leave a message or call me directly i will be available at any time and also i am i have a well arranged and well maintained instagram page too there i am sharing study cards and uh, uh, you know carousels or post related to english language and literature and uh, uh, soon i'll be launching igtv lives as well as uh, reels uh, reels are also there so you can follow me in instagram if you have also have an instagram page i have my instagram id is right here lizzy maria 90 there you can follow me okay so let's have an introduction to the play wall pony so wall pony is a kind of uh, comedy that is a kind of a special kind of comedy in which each character is labeled or each character is symbolized as a as a what as a as an animal so it's kind of a beast fable where we actually attribute we or usually call lion as the king of the uh, you know uh, king of uh, the forest and uh, tiger as the most dangerous animal in the forest so in that way in, from our point of view we are telling that right now no lion come to you and told you that see i am the lion of the sorry i am the king of the forest so just like we assume something and we attribute some qualities to some animals just as in the same way uh, it's like uh, ben johnson is labeling these characters and symbolizing these characters with some animals attributing the qualities that we assume to that animals okay so simply walpone means fox slave fox 
uh, and uh, fox is you know it's a symbol for cunningness uh, you know such qualities such features so for that reason he uh, labels the central character of this play as world pony who is like fox okay it's a finest jacobian era comedy by ben johnson and it contains elements of city comedy and beast fable so this is what i was referring okay city comedy in the sense you know uh, city and urban area is depicted in such a way that there you will find uh, most educated people and most cunning people and also there will be uh, legacy gahanders like they want to get uh, wealth not by fair means and such uh, city comedy and things and situations created because of that you can find in it and it also uh, considered as a beast fable Be beast fable in the sense animal symbols of animals are used and names of animals are used in order to label and in order to explain the characters like i said about world pony so a lot more characters you will find later so it is a merciless satire of greed and lust so greed and lust these two things are playing great presence in it as a major theme and as a major subject of discussion okay and it was premiered in globe theater globe theater bought globe theater structure and uh, the uh, facts related to globe theater we have already seen when we discussed about shakespearean theater if you have not watched it you go and watch it okay it is there in the uh, in the series of uh, elizabethan age and also se series related to shakespeare or labeled as uh, shakespeare and the setting is venice actually renaissance period in venice so the setting of this play is venice so remember that that's one of the prime detail about uh, this play so don't forget to uh, understand and memorize venice is the setting of the play volpone now let's see the major characters that we have we have here volpone see for every other major character there is a equivalent and symbolized animal according to the uh, characteristic and features of that particular character okay volpone volpone is known for his trickery and uh, cunningness so that's why he is symbolized as sly fox and actually sly fox uh, in uh, italian language and all uh, volpone means sly fox that's why this title he is a greedy and rich childless venetian gentleman or you know law or a high class man mosca mosca is symbolized as the fly so this is uh, an, an important point about volpone see i have seen plenty of questions related to you know uh, ben johnson symbolizing a character with an animal so the question can be asked how mosca which animal is symbolized as mosca or mosca's other name is in the in the in the uh, play volpone Okay, it is fly. Okay, Mosca is Volpone's servant, and he is symbolized, and he is referred as the fly. And Walter, Walter the uh, vulture, he is a lawyer. Boccaccio, sorry, Corbaccio. Corbaccio is a raven, symbolized and referred as the raven. He is an avaricious old miser, and Bonario, Bonario is a Corbaccio's son. See. Ma Walter, Corbaccio, Corvino, Lady would be these people actually they are legacy hunters. Since Walpone is childless and uh, he is rich, nobody is there as a sole heir to uh, his wealth once he die. Once he dies, so you know these legacy hunters, these people actually wanted to please Walpone by giving gifts and favors and also uh, have his wealth when he dies. So that's why they are known as legacy hunters. Corvino, Corvino is a carrion crow. His crow, remember that, and he is a merchant. And Celia, Celia is Corvino's wife. So Bonario and Celia, and uh, yeah, basically these two people are they are good people, fair-minded people in this play. But entirely, uh, entire other characters except the judge of Venice, all other characters are somewhat they are tricked, they they are cunning, and they want uh, uh, you know they want wealth. Not by fair means. They want to do some malpractice to have wealth, and they go to some uh, you know horrible extent to have it. And also they are legacy hunters, and also they are greedy minded, lustful people. Okay, remember that much. Sir Pop, Sir Politic would be the next character. He is a ridiculous Englishman, and Lady would be. Uh, she is referred as the parrot. Wife of Sir Politic would be so. Uh, so these are the major character and uh, the avo 
category the other category is a judge of venice so these are the major characters at least remember the first session i mean uh, from volpene to lady would be you have to remember the uh, character list uh, to know um, the play well now let's move on to the plot of the play it takes place in 17th century venice that is contemporary period of ben johnson only takes place in uh, 17th century venice over the course of one day so here the unity of time is respected in this play like you know it is it is happening in the course of one day within 24 hours this entire plot is happening and volpone a venetian noble man has accumulated wealth and gold through dishonest means so like i said volpone he is a venetian noble man a uh, kind of wealthy person he is greedy and rich and he has accumulated wealth and gold in dishonest man means and he worships gold okay so he often goes to where he keeps all his wealth and gold and gives that he got from other legacy hunters and uh, he worships that okay and he is a con artist con artist means he he does uh, you know tricks and cunning and schemes and plots uh, upon people so that he will get uh, further money and uh, wealth from them by tricking them such persons are known as con artist and for the last 3 years he has been attracting the interest of three legacy hunters walter corbaccio and corvino so uh, he for last 3 months through his con activities he is attracting uh, the interest of three legacy hunters walter corbaccio and corvino these three people they are uh, you know they are actually chasing um, Volpone or wanted to please Volpone uh, without any delay because uh, Volpone was acting ill and he can and he is childless too and he is rich you know uh, air is there for uh, Volpone's immense amount of wealth and gold so these three people they wanted uh, Volpone, Volpone favor them uh, one of them so they could have the entire wealth and estates. And Volpone is rich and childless and he pretends that he is ill and near to death and the legacy hunters try to please him by giving expensive gifts in order to have his wealth after his death. So Volpone is very rich and childless that means he has no heir to his uh, uh, his uh, entire wealth and gold that he has. So these legacy hunters they are you know they are pleasing him and giving him uh, giving him gifts and wealth and further money and favor so that they can have his entire wealth by themselves and these legacy hunters uh, you know volpone actually he, he pretends that he is ill he is never uh, uh, ill in truth sense but he is only pretending ill with the help of his servant mosca and he uh, spreads a rumor that he is near to death so these legacy hunters they are eager to please him and uh, in order to please him he gives uh, expensive gifts and uh, you know uh, they and they wish an early death for him too and want to have his wealth nothing else but he has an excellent health and this was his another trick to amass wealth from these greedy people that like i said already told this point now before the beginning of this play you have to understand this thing now we will have the act wise summary in act one what is happening the legacy hunters come to volpone uh, who is sick and present gifts to him and each of them promise to be the heir to his wealth so what is happening uh, when the act begins the story exposes itself we can see that one after another the legacy hunters they are coming and presenting uh, gifts to him and each of them promises more uh, wealth to him in order to become an heir to you know his entire wealth but Corbashi is a person who is actually comes with a medicine uh, maybe it's a poison too it can, there is a chance that it's a, it is a poison so that uh, it will hasten the death of Volpone so Volpone was disappointed with uh, the gift given by whom given by Corbashio but later he promises that he will come back with more valuables in order to please uh, please Volpone and after uh, the visit of all these lazy hunters Volpone Mosca his servant both of them laugh at their gullibility so how gullible these people are even though they are educated they are uh, in great positions but they are ultimately gullible and Mosca tells about the beautiful wife of Corvino so they were talking Volpone and Mosca they are alone and they are talking and uh, uh, in their talking Mosca tells and mentions about the beautiful ravishing wife of 
Corvino, Celia, who is kept under lock and the key is with him always and also guarded by 10 people always. So, Corvino, we, here we can see that Corvino is a person who has his own insecurities and he wanted to keep his uh, uh, beautiful wife Celia under control uh, through every other means and also he doesn't want his uh, wife, uh, wife see any other people like just see another people and another person or you know another or other people see her but uh, when it comes with the question of wealth Corwin is ready to do anything and sacrifice anything any of his uh, well said attitudes and well said you know uh, things that he tells a, tells to Celia so basically Mosca reveals the beautiful reveals about the beautiful wife of Corvina whose name is Celia and Celia is an innocent and a good hearted person and Celia of course nobody can approach her because he is kept she is kept under lock and the room key is always with him and also uh, her room is guarded by 10 people always like she is a terrorist or in, uh, or a prisoner like that and Volpone burned with lust for her and determined to see her using disguise so after the description of Mosca about Celia Volpone determined to meet her because uh, you know his imagination about Celia actually made him to burn with uh, lust for her so she he determined to have her at any cost so first uh, he wanted to see her at any uh, circumstances to create some circumstances uh, stances and Volpone will go out in disguise because nobody could see Volpone uh, in his true uh, figure why because Volpone rumored uh, or Volpone spreaded a rumor that he is ill and he is about to die so he cannot uh, just like that he cannot enter into the street and uh, you know show off show there up okay so that's why he wanted to adopt some disguise in order to see Celia now act 2 begins the same day after a while so the time is just 24 hours the entire play action of the play so second act begins just after a while in the same day in the street of Corvino's house lady would be and her husband talk uh, to a boy and they were interrupted by the arrival of Scoto Mantua uh, Scoto Mantua actually M-A-N-T-U-A it is M-A-N-T-U-A who is Volpone in disguise as a medicine showman so uh, here we can see in the street lady would be and her husband they are talking to a boy who is a traveler and lady would be somewhat attracted to this boy uh, and uh, their conversation is interrupted by an arrival of Scotum Mantua who is a medical showman like in street we will see such people who will introduce medicines and ointments uh, or oils that will suit your uh, you know uh, body and tension and uh, that will really relieve you uh, out of your illness so such kind of things are not so rare in streets you must have uh, seen such people so like in that disguise Volpone arrives in the street of Corvino's house and he starts an elaborate speech about a new oil that he has with him so like every other medical show man or medicine show man he also started with an elaborate uh, speech about an oil that he has with him which has a medicinal value and in the end of the speech he asked to drop the handkerchief if anybody wants it so he can see that Celia is there in the window and only a window is there for she to look uh, out of the uh, you know look at the outer world uh, the door is locked and 10 people are there guarding her and he cannot she cannot move wherever she wants to be uh, so you know she is just looked from the window and heard the speech and she, he also wanted to she also wanted to have that oil which actually uh, you know uh, get her out of her problems so when you know Volpone asked uh, her, you know if anybody wants this oil just drop the handkerchief so she did it innocently okay she never understood or never quite uh, aware that you know this thing that uh, this uh, medicine showman is doing just for her just to see her okay so Corvino just then arrives and sees this and burned with jealousy see she just dropped a kerchief to a random medicine seller medicine medicine showman so with that act you know 
वॉल्पोनी सो सिलिया एंड हर ब्यूटीफुल वॉइस सॉरी ब्यूटीफुल फेस जो जस्ट देन वेन शी वॉज डूइंग दैट कॉर्विनो जस्ट अ राइस एंड सीज दिस एंड एज ऑलवेज ही बर्न विद जेलसी एंड वॉल्पोनी सो सिलिया एंड रिटर्न टू हिज होम एंड ही वॉन्टेड हेर अट एनी कोस्ट एज ही वॉज सो लस्टफुल टूवर्ड्स हेर ओके एंड मोस्कर मोस्कर डिसाइडेड टू प्लान फॉर इट टू कम ट्रू सो ही रिवील्ड वोलपोने वेंट टू हिज होम एंड ही रिवील्ड हिज मोस्ट लस्टफुल लस्टफुलनेस टूवर्ड्स द लिया एंड मोस्को ऑल्सो डिसाइडेड मोस्को ऑल्सो अंडरस्टूड दिस एंड ही डिसाइडेड टू सम डिसाइडेड टू प्लान सम स्कीम्स फॉर दिस टू कम ट्रू so meanwhile jealous corvino now punishes celia by forbidding her to go to church so the only thing that he allowed her to uh, go out of this out of that room that was to church once in a week she could go to church and that was forbidden because she threw a handkerchief to the street she was forbidden to stand even near the window and got barred and uh, uh, from then she needs to do everything backwards if she is talking to some someone he she needs to start you know not forward to that person showing her face but showing her back she needs to stand and if she wanted to walk she need to walk backward like that way she need to do everything backward not showing her face so how uh, ridiculous this kind of punishments i don't know but these are the things that corvino uh, did with celia because she breached Uh, you know one of the things that uh, he demanded from her that she should not maintain any contact with anybody that's a bullshit thing but still so if you are noticing if you are noticing that in every other play that was there during this time there is an insecure person so i, I am seeing insecure man throughout the plays that we are seeing see in every man in his humor do you remember the person kitley kitley is a person who has also lot of insecurities and here we have a corvino who has insecurities for the woman uh, that he has as his wife then mosca arrives there and implies to corvino that he, uh, that is he uh, let celia sleep with the volpone then he will restore to health again and he will declare corvino as his heir so just while uh, corvino was uh, you know punishing celia and scolding celia and telling all these things about his ethics and attitudes and his uh, thoughts about wives and all now mosca arrives with the scheme and he tells to corvino that you know the doctors or those who are treating Uh, you know uh, medical treatment is given to ovalpone for his betterment of health so those people they actually suggested a kind of medicine for um, you know unusual kind of medicine for ovalpone that is it uh, you know that is if a beautiful woman sleeps with ovalpone then he will restore to health again this is a un- this is an unusual kind of medicine but still so uh, mosca came to corvino to ask that if you let celia to sleep asleep uh, with volpone in a chamber along with him then he will restore to health again and he will declare corvino as his sole heir to his wealth and estates and gold whatever he has suddenly all his jealousy vanishes and consents to the offer so what happens to your ethics and your jealousy now corvino suddenly everything vanishing and uh, you know suddenly everything vanishes and uh, Uh, he gives his consent to the offer at once because if he refuses and if you takes time to give his consent then many legacy like hunters are there so they can actually provide with more beautiful women uh, to volpone instead celia then they can be uh, the heir to uh, volpone's wealth that he doesn't want okay so there ends act 2 now begins act 3 and it begins with the soliloquy of mosca who is conscious about his power and it may see from volpone say mosca uh, until now we we have seen him as a great devoted servant to volpone and all his schemes but in here in act 3 in the beginning of act 3 we can see uh, mosca delivering a soliloquy and in that soliloquy that soliloquy is basically thinking aloud revealing uh, the character's uh, thoughts that's the major point of a solo- soliloquy 
and in that soul loki he reveals about his power even though he is a servant he is more powerful and his independence from volpone and his desire to have some wealth from volpone so uh, basically he wanted to have the whole wealth or at least some amount of the wealth from uh, volpone for his services that he uh, lent to volpone so mosca then goes to bonario so after this uh, soul loki he goes to bonario and tells him that his father so bonario is also a good hearted gentle man a young man and he tells him mosca tells him that his father corbaccio is going to disinherit him since he since he is going uh, going to give all his wealth to volpone as a gift so mosca actually plans something here on her, on his own and he goes to bonario and tells him that see your father corbaccio is going to uh, you know give all his wealth to volpone and thereby he is going to disinherit you okay so uh, you know by telling all these things he could uh, he brings bonario uh, to volpone's house in order to see corbaccio signing the documents and he hoped that you know immediately after seeing this bonario will get enraged and he will kill his father there thereby uh, you know since he corbaccio already signed the document to uh, you know the entire wealth to whom and their wealth to uh, volpone uh, he will bonario will kill after killing um, corbaccio by his son bonario and anyway the wealth will inherited by volpone and he will get rid of one of the legacy hunters as well and this uh, now in uh, the time is noon and now volpone is preparing to seduce celia so now mosca already informed volpone that corvino has given his consent to have celia and sleep with her uh, in alone in the chamber and he gives his consent already so volpone is ready and preparing to seduce celia while mosca hides bonario so bonario uh, is there in volpone's house and bonario is there behind the corner of the bedroom and he is hiding there and uh, you know mosca actually anticipated that or thought that corbino will arrive first and there they will have a fight and bonario is going to kill uh, corbaccio and they, and the situation will go like that but instead of corbaccio who comes first corvino and celia arrives arrive first and while celia was reluctant to sleep with volpone so celia is actually making complaints and because she is she is not ready to sleep with this stranger volpone she is a good hearted woman and she could not do that she is actually so innocent and uh, so pure so but corvino wanted the wealth and be the sole heir to his entire wealth and estate so uh, she is nagged to the situation and you know pulled the pulled and pushed to the situation to sleep with volpone and she was delivered there in volpone's room and corvino and every everyone else leaves okay but bonario is there in the corner of the bedroom hiding there okay so here Uh, the entire uh, plan of mosca and volpone go wrong now celia and volpone alone and he leaps at her and he, this surprises her and refuses his advances so corvino knows volpone as an ill person who is uh, going to die at any point so celia also knew volpone as an uh, as a old rich uh, person who is going to die soon so celia when he she was alone there in the room volpone he actually showed her the true nature of volpone and he leaps at her by seeing her and she was he was so lustful and she was he actually desired her so much so he leaps at her and this actually surprised and bewildered her and she was actually running away from all his advancements towards her and bonario comes and rescues celia from him so bonario was there and as unexpectedly bonario comes out of that hiding place from that corner of the bedroom and rescues celia from him then borcasio arrives 
sorry then corbacio arrives arise so after Cor corvino and celia and decelia uh, was rescued by bonario and they left the scene and corbacio arrives also walter with uh, whom mosca planned to get rid of walpon uh, from this mess so corbacio and walter both of them arrives and mosca made a plan with walter walter is a lawyer so mosca made a plan with uh, walter to get rid Volpone from this mess. See, now uh, Celia knows the true nature of Volpone and Bonario also have seen it. So, there is a mess created now. So, uh, Mosca wanted uh, to get rid of him from this entire mess that was created by the situation. So, he planned that with Walter while Corbashi also arrives. While Mosca went to Lady Politic would be and tells that her husband's prostitute is now in front of the Senate, referred to Celia. So, after leaving the place of Volpone, um, Bonario and Celia, they will definitely go to the, uh, the building of Senate and judges and where they can actually have the help of law and regulations, right? And inform the judges about the fraud nature of Volpone. And Moscow knows that Lady Politic would be she is always suspicious about her husband having an affair with someone or some other woman or a prostitute okay so he directly mosca directly go to lady politic would be and tells her that her husband's prostitute is now in front of the senate building you can go and meet her so he is basically referring to celia because celia must be in uh, in the in the building of senate so uh, she leaves and goes to Senate building and the scene also shifts to Senate building. There, Bonario and Celia have informed the judges of Venice about Walpone's deceit and also about Walpone's attempts to rape uh, Celia. So, like I said, Celia and Bonario, they went to the Senate building and there they revealed everything related to Walpone and his attempt of raping Celia and uh, you know, Walpone's deceit, everything that they knew from there, they revealed there. And Corbacio's disinheritance of his son and Corvino's decision to prostitute his wife. So, you know, basically they revealed everything. Walpone's deceit and Walpone's attempt to rape Celia, Corbacio's disinheritance of his son to have more wealth from Walpone and Corvino decision to prostitute his wife so these things they revealed to the judges of venice and but the lawyer walter portrayed bonario and celia as lovers so walter and uh, mosca they came there in order to rescue Volpone out of this case. So, Walter, they, uh, Walter uh, being a lawyer, he portrayed Bonario and Celia as lovers before the judge while Corvino as a wounded husband. See, Corvino is uh, portrayed as a wounded husband who got cuckolded by his wife Celia and Corbacio who got nearly killed by his evil son. So, Walter changed the face of this case entirely and it was turned against Bonario and Celia by portraying Corvino as, uh, sorry, Bonario and Celia first of all as lovers and Corvino as a wounded husband, then Corbacio as a uh, person who got nearly killed by his own evil son. And just then, Lady po Politics comes there in and identified Celia as a prostitute of her husband. So, Moscow already told her that your husband's prostitute, you can find it in the uh, Senate building. So, she comes in just that moment and identified Celia as the prostitute of her husband. And now, the ill Volpone, who is pretending as ill, Volpone is pretended, uh, pretending as ill and near to death, he enters the room acting like sick and uh, judge ordered to arrest Bonario and Celia. So, there were no clear evidence that actually goes against uh, Volpone. But being a lawyer, Walter knows how to turn upside down a case. So, it goes all against Bonario and Celia. So, uh, they got arrested first. There runs Act 4. Now, uh, we have the final Act, Act 5. Volpone returned to home feeling really ill and sick that he was always pretending. So, anyway, the case turned in positive to Volpone, but still he returned to home by feeling very sick and tired that he was always pretending. So, now he feels what he was pretending always. And in order to dispel his fears, he decided to make a final prank on the legacy hunters. Now he knows that he cannot, you know, he is not enjoying all these pranks that he is doing with the the legal legacy hunters or on the legacy hunters so he wanted to just do a final prank and get rid with all these legacy hunters 
so he spreads with the help of mosca again he spreads the rumor that he died and he asked to mosca uh, to pretend that he has made an uh, made the heir of his wealth by signing all of them to him so what happens he plans a final prank on the legacy hunters so as a part of it he spreads a rumor that he died and he made mosca as his sole heir and in order to prove that he signed you know by trusting mosca uh, you know uh, he signed the whole entire wealth to him legally okay and the legacy hunters got fooled as expected so legacy hunters they were actually uh, so desperate and also they got fooled and also they you know they they were like you know real gullibles they are and they now they know that you know they got gullified by uh, mosca and volpone and volpone is dis disguised as a venetian guard to mock each of these legacy hunters without knowing it so volpone is now dead uh, for every other people volpone is dead so what was his plan that he will kill this person volpone and live in uh, the identity of another person so he uh, disguised himself as a venetian guard and he came to these legacy hunters who are befooled by him and mosca and you know without their knowledge and he uh, mocked each of these legacy hunters and but mosca says to audience that since volpone is dead for the outer world now he won't let volpone come back alive until he pays him so mosca has some other plan which are unknown to volpone so what volpone thought that once this hustle bustle end he will ask mosca mosca to return the wealth that he signed to him so he will be rich again and he'll have a plentiful life but mosca got another plan and schemes like you know mosca won't return the entire wealth given to him he will demand a wage or a at least a share of the wealth uh, wealth and she he also wanted to have a relieved life meanwhile volpone gloats in front of each legacy hunters and he was unrecognized by him by him so without their knowledge he was mocking and volpone uh, to his heart's quench he mocked each uh, he mocked each legacy hunters now by hearing this volter even decided to uh, recant his testimony in front of the senate so volter even thought of uh, recanting or uh, revising or revoking his testimony of bonario and celia being lovers and uh, you know the testimony that he gave uh, in front of the lawyers in favor of volpone so he wanted to revoke that testimony so he does that see in front of the uh, senate mosca needed to admit that volpone is alive and he is the, he is his heir now so mosca he needs to you know after volpone revoking his testimony mosca needs to come in front of the senate and he needs to attempt uh, see, sorry he needs to admit that volpone is alive and he is the i mean mosca is the sole heir to Uh, Volpone's entire wealth, and you know, Volpone also could not look at Mosca being the sole heir to his wealth that he accumulated. So he revealed every of the every other scheme and plan that they together made, and they both of them lost their wealth entirely. So Volpone was arrested and he was imprisoned, and while Mosca is consigned or sent to some slave's galley. and volter is debar since uh, you know volter he was a lawyer he actually used his power and knowledge for dishonest things right so volter got debarred and corbusier stripped of his property so corbusier wanted to uh, actually disherit inherit his son that's that was the uh, you know crime that he committed so corbusier was stripped of his properties and every other property of him was given to his son bonario and like uh, corvino he was not the wounded husband but he was the one who can gave consent to prostitute his wife celia so corvino corvino was publicly humiliated in this play ultimately so every other culprit and every other legacy hunters and uh, you know tricky people they got their share of punishment and the play ends with a small note from the player i right? asking the audience to upload if they liked it or if they enjoyed so that with that note from playwright the play ends 
Now let's see some themes that are related and inside this play greed and lust. Anyway, lust for people, lust for women and lust for wealth as well as greed for um, wealth and gold is the prime and pervading um, topic and theme of this play and parasitism so we can see that Volpone he is accumulating wealth not by fair means he is actually accumulating wealth uh, through some tricks and uh, cons that he is doing uh, with the mosca to upon other people and uh, he is just like a parasite living upon their wealth accumulated by himself and parasite is uh, sorry mosca is also a parasite who is living with uh, Volpone under him and uh, using his wealth and uh, you know the things that are related to Volpone, the comforts that Volpone is providing him because he is assisting him uh, in his schemes and plans. So parasitism is another theme and lust for wealth and accumulation of wealth is a major theme. See every other character, most of the characters except Bonario and Celia, they are lustful towards wealth and also always thinking about amassing more wealth for them. And here innocence and justice also emerges as uh, themes uh, like innocence in the sense Bernardo and Celia they are innocent but they are, uh, you know, they are accused of unimaginable crimes that they have not committed yet, uh, committed at once. They have not committed and thought of committing but you know justice after all served uh, to them uh, after all. So how far you will go? how uh, whatever you do but still justice will haunt you down and uh, justice will be served to innocence now yeah that's all about the play volpone by ben johnson i hope this will be helpful for you in ugc net studies and uh, don't forget to visit me in my website www.hypon.in and message you can be, you can message me there from uh, to my whatsapp number given there or you can if you want to join the whatsapp group that i have mentioned earlier you can go to the description box and click the link and join it or if not you can message directly message me i'll share the link and also you can join and don't forget to follow me on instagram my id is right here because i in a daily basis i am sharing every other contents most of the study cards and uh, short videos reels and uh, status i'm uploading there so you can have always contents related to li literature there english literature especially that will be real help for you uh, in your UGC net JRF studies even if you are studying your own this will be a help for you so that's all about it uh, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon so that you get notification whenever I upload a video and also don't forget to like this video if you like this video meet you in the next video session until then bye bye and thank you